Hello everyone, I'm Professor Geek. Welcome back to my channel. Oh, DC is dead. DC Universe is dead. There are still some fun titles, a few titles here and there that I, I haven't completely scrapped from my pull list. I still think they're fun and worth checking out. But DC Universe in general, it's dead. All of their flagship titles are, are dead or are soon dying. Uh, there's no use in following Superman action comics or Batman anymore. Uh, these, it's all dead because of Dan Didio and his little band of deconstructionist cohorts there. They have effectively now sucked every bit of fun and joy that the Rebirth Initiative brought back into DC Comics. They've sucked all of that out of the universe. They don't like that. They've cast that aside. Who cares about that? They want sad superheroes with deep psychological issues and traumas. They want storylines that consistently give them gut punches. It, this is just... It's, it's the saddest thing in the world, and it's all because of Dan Didio and his big, thick-headed, idiotic viewpoint about superheroes he does not understand them he doesn't even read comics he really doesn't and, and I'm and, and I know that I can't absolutely prove that but just from things that he said every time he's consistently asked about what do you think of the comics that you, you know that you love the most what are some titles all he'll do is, is mention Dark Knight Returns like every nihilistic bratty little 14 year old in the world and then he'll talk about some old classic Jack Kirby comics and how his comics are really worn and barely held together. That's because they're old, because you don't buy them anymore. You don't read them. All you want to do is ruin the universes we have. And, and it's... Oh, okay, I can rant. I have ranted. I can rant some more, and I will rant some more. Live streams are coming. <laughs> but let me go through this issue and just hit some hot points of this issue of DC Nation, because every issue of this is such a train wreck. It's just... It, 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 how can one man have so little self-awareness and his uh, his little underlings there with Tom King and Brian Michael Bendis working right with him? He's just he's a he's a plague. He's a plague upon these characters that we love so much. Look at the, you know, one of these characters is going to die in 21 days. You know who it's going to be. You know who it's going to be. It's going to be Tim Drake. Tim Drake. And it, the only reason they won't do Tim Drake is if enough people are already uh, calling it. But. Tim Drake's going to die, because Tim Drake has already been labeled as the symbol of hope. That's one of the reasons that Mr. Oz had to get rid of him and pull him out of the scheme there in Detective Comics to begin with for the Rebirth run, because he was such a symbol of hope for people. He symbolizes this balance that Batman needs, and the New 52 just butchered his whole past and just everything about the character's continuity, and they refused to fix that now with Rebirth, so they just don't know what to do with him. So I guarantee you they're going to kill off Tim Drake, one of the best characters in the DC Universe. It's pathetic. It's unacceptable on every level, and we're just scratching the surface. Wait until you see some of this nonsense. I've got my reminders here of, of what true heroes should be and the versions of them that should be still in the iconic public consciousness there, but Dan Didio's a mess. He's just, ugh. Again, uh, with the uh, with the little letter to the fans, it's it's just dribble. It's just dribble. It's stock stock information he just pulls and they all say the same thing oh you know it's great we're gonna we're gonna keep changing things up but still remaining true to the heat uh, stop saying that you don't even know what it means just enough i want to get to the good stuff here because i don't want this video to run too long so of course we've got you know very first up in the issue uh, a ad here for the heroes in crisis tom king's little Identity crisis wannabe so they can hurry up and move the universe to another new 52 initiative damn Didio's little baby there This is ridiculous They have psychological files here for Batman Superman Wonder Woman and a few others Psychological files now of all the characters Batman is one character who You could probably you could definitely have a psychological file on him I do not hold to the fact that he's insane or that he's got these issues and he's psycho and filled with rage I think those are nonsense theories about Batman. They're complete misunderstandings of the core of his archetype. Those are people who would prefer somebody like a Punisher or like a Lobo or like a Deadpool or somebody like that. And they're trying to project all that nonsense onto Batman, who's supposed to be the gothic detective. As Grant Morrison famously said, he is not insane. He's in, he's hyper sane. I forgot exactly how he put it. That might have been it. But he is in the midst of Gotham, in the midst of this darkness, overwhelming darkness and corruption, 
And he's the sane one, pointing to the light, leading people to the light. There's a great quote I often quote from the Carl Kessel World's Finest issue in that as well. But, uh, but you know, we've got to have a psychological profile of him. And because of everything Tom King is doing to him now, he's just, you know, constantly being beaten back down into different traumatic situations or whatever. So, you know, whatever. You're doing that to Batman. It's not, not the first time that's happened. It's a misunderstanding of his character. It's a lazy approach to his character. I'll talk about that in general, how this is a lazy approach to characters in general. But we have Superman, people. Superman has a psychological profile, has a psychotherapy assessment, and is diagnosed here with adjustment disorder, mixed disturbance of emotions and conduct, conversion disorder with motor symptoms of deficient... Oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. This is, this is not Superman. This is not the character of Superman. This is a completely new character that Dan Didio has shepherded under Brian Michael Bendis' writing there. And this is their little perverted, sick fantasy of what they should turn a wonderfully aspirational, hopeful, inspirational character into because they don't understand inspiration. They don't understand hope. They can't understand goodness in any way unless it comes from some failings and some from some trauma. They, they just these poor people in the life experiences and outlooks they must have this is sick and pathetic wonder woman equally she is not xena warrior princess people she is not overcoming isolationist from her uh, divided family you know on on the mascara there or whatever her mother sent her here with a mission with her blessing this is ridiculous she doesn't have all of these and we're going to talk about wonder woman and g willow wilson's train wreck of an article trying to talk about what she wants to bring to the character but this this heads need to roll right now absolutely a dc this is unacceptable on every level anybody who had anything to do with this approach to superman in dc right now needs to never work on the character again ever i don't care from the editor of the of the superman family right down to the bottom to the to the whoever this is ridiculous this is absolutely no way to treat the character it's a complete and total ignorant misunderstanding and i don't even care i know some of my viewers well i like you know this or that i like hey you know i like man is you can like whatever you want that's not an argument this is not a a issue that is subject to taste this is about the archetype and what he does for the culture and what should not be done to him just a disgrace absolutely a disgrace moving ahead i don't want to linger you know, you can have a psychological profile of Harley Quinn. Sure, she, she's made tailor-made for that. Um, Booster Gold, I don't really like that treatment of him, but if you absolutely must, at least you're not doing it to one of the core characters. Uh, the Grant, the uh, Grant Morrison Green Lantern stuff again. That looks kind of interesting. It's a typical Green Lantern, a typical Grant Morrison approach. Um, you know, bringing in all the the levels and all the uh, phases of a character's history and trying to work them into a, into a story. But I'm looking forward to seeing what he does with that. Hopefully, it'll be good. Superman can't even stand up anymore. It's just the weight of this nonsense that's being dealt with him. I want to go to G. Willow Wilson on Wonder Woman, though. Let me find this here. This is unbelievable, the things she says in this article. I'm not going to read the article, but I'm just going to tell you. Here we go. First of all, gorgeous cover for her first issue there by Terry and Rachel. Dodson there. I love, even when they're drawing her in the Xena Warrior Princess armor there, they still just have a gorgeous approach to her. I love their renderings of her. So that's nice to see. But G. Willow Wilson does not understand Wonder Woman at all. Basically, the gist of this article is that she wants to use Wonder Woman for political activism. That's Basically, she honestly comes out and says that. It's ridiculous. She wants to do exactly what she's done with the creation of the character of Miss Marvel and, and the social justice warrior agenda at Marvel. She wants to do that to Wonder Woman now. Here she says here, uh, delving into Wonder Woman comics both old and new, Wilson became intrigued by the way the character interacts with American politics and culture across the decades. Uh, newsflash, Wonder Woman does not interact with American politics. She should never act. Just like Superman, she's above that. Yes, she's about preaching the Amazonian peaceful way, the, the way of compassion, the way of love allure that Marston created her in. She is not partisan. She's not there to speak to social policies. This is, this is nonsense. And listen to what Wilson says here at the bottom. Wilson observes that in the late 80s and early 90s, Wonder Woman stories were themed more as escapist high fantasy, reflecting a desire for something apolitical. And now, Wilson says, it seems that she's going back to her origins in which she was quite insistent about her vision for what she thinks the world should look like. 
this is this is BS. This is BS. First of all, she's trying to relegate an apolitical escapist fantasy approach to Wonder Woman stories to just a little phase that happened in the 80s and early 90s. All of that nonsense those comic skaters and people are trying to strive for in, in comics again, that's just a little phase. No, no, these characters, when they began, were, were really, really picketing the uh, the Senate there and really speaking to political agendas and policies. And they were they were definitely tools of politics and, and uh, you know, the right political party. This is this is nonsense. This is utter, utter BS. And look at this. It seems that she's going back to her origins now. How does that seem that like that way, G. Willow Wilson? I'm reading the current Wonder Woman title now, and I don't see any of that in there. I see a lot of nonsense in the current Wonder Woman title with her still being a you know Zeus baby, just another one of his little bastards running around Greece, nothing special about her there, and then uh, having a twin brother, nonsense, doesn't need that at all in her in her mythology. But whatever, there's still no politics in her stories right now. You, you, G. Willow Wilson, you want to bring this in. You want to turn the character into your little activist for your social agenda, warrior justice views there. This is nonsense. This is... Goodbye, Wonder Woman. You're, you're dead now. You, you, you're going to die. Issue 58. I know you're already in the, uh, the death throes, but you're gone now. And um, that's a shame. Superman's gone. Batman's gone. Detective Comics, we'll see. Uh... Hill's uh, run, I think, is wrapped up with the current issue now, so I, I don't, I forgot exactly who's coming on, but uh, but you know we'll have to see. I think it was a decent writer coming on, I, I guess. Blanking on his name right now, but we'll see what happens with Detective Comics. Another thing though that worries me about Batman and throughout the DC universe, period, and Detective Comics is this little look at this. This is wonderful. The Darkest Nights. Isn't this great? Isn't this direction that Dan Didio shepherding the DC Universe and their heroes in wonderful? It talks about how the Batman family is just shattered now and they're going to continue to get shattered. And it's just, oh, this is great how they're so conflicted and don't trust each other anymore. This is good storytelling. And look at this at the bottom. This is what I want to show you. Always darkest before the dawn, right? Nope. As the once unified Bat heroes of the DC Universe have splintered, the isolating events of 2018 will leave Batman especially vulnerable in 2019. After issue 50's devastating blow to Bruce, we're building to another big gut punch for the Bat in Batman 75, says Batman Group Editor Jamie S. Rich. Who asked for that? Who wants that? Who is looking forward to that? I... It's mind-boggling. How little the people who run DC understand these characters or understand about basic storytelling, basic mythology. I mean, these people need to go back to, to flipping community college and just learn the basics of storytelling. This is, this is utter nonsense. It's so baffling to me, this approach, this nihilistic worldview approach that Dan Didio has just forced into the, into the company. Even when he was made to sit back and let Hope regain some sales for them, He's back at it again. Why are they letting him do this? Why? DC's dead. The DC universe is dead. I mean, seriously, cancel your titles. It's you know, a few of them here and there. I'm still enjoying Hawkman. I'm going to keep on with Detective and see where that goes. I don't know how much longer I'll be able to keep with that. Justice League Dark is still quite good, and, and I'm looking forward. I'm happy to have at least one title in which I can receive a, a good storytelling of, of Wonder Woman there. So I'm still excited about that. You know, we'll see where the main Justice League title is going with Scott Snyder. It's, uh, I've talked about that run before. It, it keeps bouncing one way and then the other. Just when I think it's going to be really great, then it has some concerns. And I don't know. So we'll see. We'll see how it still plays out. Um, but I'm still still tentatively looking at that title. So like I said, there are some titles here and there. Do what you want. But, but the DC Universe, I've lost hope for it. It's gone now. It's going to need... It's so sad that so soon after Rebirth gave us back these characters that we loved and we'd missed and we finally had them back and sales were booming it was a great thing for dc so soon after that initiative do they turn back to their old ways and dan didio gets to rear his little ugly head again and push his agenda on the entire industry on the entire universe and now we're back now we're back and we're just going to keep stumbling down the road of darkness into irrelevance into the place where these characters no longer inspire and they no longer do their work, so you might as well look elsewhere. I'll continue to review occasional issues here and there for the some of the good stuff, the Hawkmans and stuff like that, uh, as long as they remain good. But I'm going to really try to focus on some alternatives to the DC and Marvel 
uh, trades. You people who are like me, you love comic books, you love to be inspired by heroes. We're going to look at some other options, uh, as I've already looked at a couple times in recent videos. We're going to keep doing that, and I'll continue to check in on the uh, on the train wreck that is the DC universe, and just uh, point out exactly how much flames there are at any given one moment. But uh, but this is nonsense. This is a sad day. So anyway. Uh, we'll pick things up a little bit. I have the video already recorded for the War Hero Archetype. That's going to be a lot of fun, looking at some great classic stories from DC, Marvel, and elsewhere, and uh, talking about the War Hero Archetype and how that character operates in storytelling and in popular culture, mythology. So that'll be fun. We'll turn to that, and tomorrow night I'm going to do a live stream again. So come on by for that. I'll post the topics and everything on Twitter. And until then, keep enjoying and digging deeper into the hero stories you love, and keep looking. They're out there. Thanks for watching, guys.